werewolves and zombies and mummies It's an all-out assault If you want to survive the night Better come down to the vault Hello and welcome to the VHS Vault. I am Owen Brand. And I'm Katie Cadaver. And we are here today to bring you some fun and games, and uh, hopefully you can uh, hang out with us and enjoy some conversation about what specifically, Katie? Well, it's come to my attention that our listeners want to get to know us better, and I think since we're doing a horror movie podcast, maybe we should talk about our favorite movies a little bit. Um, at least as they relate to certain genres of horror and stuff. So I thought, why not just uh, talk about our favorites in a few different genres? What do you think? I like that idea a whole lot because uh, there's a lot of genres and there's a lot of favorites. And it was um, it's going to be difficult to narrow these down, but uh, let's, let's <laughs> have course. some fun. Well, all right. So I want to start with uh, the most obvious genre for the both of us, the zombie genre. Let's talk about it. Uh, what's your? I couldn't pick just one movie. Um, unfortunately, I had to pick at least two. So that's where I'm coming from right away. Just so you know, broke the rules. That's yes. okay. <clears throat> that's that, what I do. That's fine. So you want to talk about zombie movies? Yeah. Well, I don't think that it is any uh, secret um, for anybody that's heard our podcast before that I am a huge fan of redneck zombies. Uh, Redneck Zombies for me is one of the um, one of the best low budget fun movies that I could possibly imagine. I've recommended it to so many people. Um, so for me, on on zombie movies, that's one of them. I don't know that it's my top because I do have another another selection as well. If you want me to tell that now, uh, yeah, give me all your selections. All my please. selections. <laughs> so the other one, of course, for me, and there is no. There is no substitute on this movie, and it's the first Return of the Living Dead. Um, that movie right there is one of the movies that um, sort of solidified my love for the zombie genre as a as a whole. And um, there's so many reasons. There's so many reasons from top to bottom. Um, I could go through them, but I kind of don't want to spoil any of these movies for people that haven't seen them. Well, we're not going to spoil them, definitely, because if people haven't seen them, they need to get out there and see them so that maybe we can all talk about it. But um, when it comes to Return of the Living Dead, that was one of the ones that I chose as well, Um, probably for a lot of the same reasons as you. Like, for me, there's two things. There's In my two choices, there's two huge reasons why I like them. My other choice is Dawn of the Dead, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. And why I love Dawn of the Dead so much versus why I love Return of the Living Dead, they're two different kind of zombie movies. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, I love for the punk culture and the music and the ridiculousness and the quotable lines and everything that makes it the campy cult classic that it is. Um, Dawn of the Dead was the first zombie movie that really introduced me to like the idea of what do humans do in the zombie apocalypse? It's not so much about the zombie being the threat as like, what are humans doing um, with this new posed threat? And like, how does life look after the infected and all of that kind of stuff? And just the, the setting in the mall and stuff, it just spoke to me in a way that um, that's kind of what I like about zombie films and TV shows anyways, is like, the bleakness of it, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um, for me, return of the living dead also with the culture and the crazy eighties, you know I mean? It, it is unmistakably eighties. And, um, that's one of the things I love about it is it's, same. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, uh, and you know, the storyline, the way they lay it all out, the way it's, it's, it's well thought out in, in a way that doesn't lend itself to being pretentious. And it's just a really, really well done movie. So agreed. And the soundtrack is dope as fuck. The soundtrack is dope as fuck. Let's not let's not get it twisted. I have it on vinyl. It's a good time. That's what I heard. That's yes. awesome. Yes. All right. So that covers zombie movies. Okay. Uh, how about a s- slasher films? Where are you on that? Man, listen. I have a long, wonderful history with slasher movies, starting with when I was super young, watching the first Friday the 13th movie when I wasn't supposed to. 
Um, nice. And I'm sure. Speaking of rule breakers. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point. But uh, I think we we lived in the middle of nowhere um, in Texas, a little town called Lone Camp, Texas. And there was only one little store in this town, and it was a gas station. It was they had like you know hot dog buns and hamburger buns, and then. Uh, soda pop, you know, Jolly Ranchers. And then they had a small video store right there inside. Nice. Like it just was one wall about the size of this wall I'm looking at in front of me. You guys who are listening can't see it, but Katie can <laughs> no, see it. No, they cannot. This is the size wall. It's probably eight feet tall by eight feet wide. And that's all they had. Those were the movies. And I got Friday the 13th there. I had my big sister rent it for me because I they wouldn't rent it to me. I was just a little kid. <clears throat> but they rented it to her. And then I got a chance to watch it on the VCR after my parents went to sleep. So... Um, so yeah, that, that one for me was, how old were you? <clears throat> well, I was, uh, let's see here, maybe 10, that maybe sounds 10 years about old. right. Yep. That 10 sounds years like old. 10 year old boy behavior. Yeah. But you know, that's, that's honestly not one of the ones I selected, even though that's a very important movie for me that brought me into the genre. And then for me, the two, that was a fake out. That's not even one of your picks. That was a deke. Yeah. Oh was, my gosh. Sorry. The first pick I have is the burning and the burning is one that's very underrated. If it, if it had come out in just a couple years earlier, you know, I think that it could have taken the place of Friday the 13th in, in the sub in the you know popular culture of, of, um, um, horror movies and the slasher genre, and then my other one was Pieces, and not because it's nice. a, not because it's a well done movie. No, it's, it's a it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's, a mess. it's a shit show. <laughs> but the reason I picked it was because it's a shit show, and because when you watch it, you it just takes you to another place. You don't even care that the acting is terrible and the dubbing is terrible. You don't care. The dubbing is the best part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you're what you're there for is to watch the you know watch the puzzle pieces of the movie all come together. <laughs> Did you see there was a release at one point? That I, I'm sure it was a Blu-ray release or something that came with a puzzle. I did hear that. Did you? Yeah, that was. I don't. I mean, I'm I'm not the collector of physical media that some people are, but um, I I have seen that at conventions and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What about for you? What's what's your slasher movies? Well, if anybody knows me, they know I'm a huge fan of Leatherface. So the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two specifically is my shit, and. Uh, for so many reasons, I've been inspired creatively by this film. I have a tattoo inspired by this film. Like, there's something about the humanity of Leatherface in part two that I enjoy. Wow. And, and it's weird and it's hard to describe, but like, I don't know. I, I see a lot of parallels, let's sure. just say, you know, between... Um, some of my own struggles in life, you know, I can, I can parallel them to Leatherface, um, just in the way that I can embody the character, like in my burlesque and you know, stuff like that. So I, and I just love the film. Like it's, it's all a horror comedy, really dark comedy, which I enjoy that. And it's lighthearted, but it still has great gore and effects and great characters. And it's, and it's fucking Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, I don't know. It just has everything I love about horror movies. You can so. never go wrong with the Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre selection here. That's um, I, I struggled with putting the first one on there. The first one to me is the is the um, is the big one. That's that's my favorite of the of the series. But and I have a different relationship to that film than I have to Part Two. Um, but I love I love them for different reasons. Yeah, and and I've paid homage to both in my creative work. So um, my other pick was Friday the 13th part six, Jason lives. Uh, that's just my favorite in the Friday the 13th series. Is that the one with the lightning bolt? Yeah. Oh my goodness. In the cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a ridiculous film. That's fun. And you know, when it comes to slasher films, uh, I, I can't go wrong with that one. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Very excellent choices there. Um, so we've we've covered the zombie uh, movies and the slasher movies. What else you want to talk about? One that I don't have a ton of picks for, but supernatural, supernatural horror, supernatural horror movies. There's a lot of great ones. Um, I I struggle to sort of narrow this one down because, um, you know, so many so many movies have supernatural components. You know, for instance, the Stephen King movies that I love so much, like Christine and Pet Cemetery. For sure. Can you guys hear the thunder? Like, we're having a thunderstorm. It is thundering back there, and I think the mics might be picking it up. I don't know. That's cool. You guys get to hear the thunderstorm we're sitting through. That's awesome. And the mint that you're crunching on. <laughs> Let me crunch this mint for you real quick. 
This is a podcast, Owen. ASMR. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> I'm putting people to sleep with these <laughs> these tasty tones from my vocal cords. Here we go again with this voice acting. So, <laughs> so supernatural <laughs> movies. Um, if I really had to narrow it down to what I'm into right now, um, I would have to go with first and foremost The Gate. Nice. The Gate is one of my favorite movies of all time. I actually That's, watched that one's on my shame list. Is it really? Yeah, I've I tried to watch it and I fell asleep, so I never made it back, and I need to. Maybe we should do. Maybe we should chat about our shame list at some point, and um, you know. Shout out to the Shame List Picture Show with Michael Viers, uh, great Milwaukee local podcast uh, about movies. Very cool. So the gate for me is. There, there's so many things I love about it. There, it. I don't think that there has been a better, a better done supernatural horror movie because it just encompasses everything. Um, there is a there's a heavy metal element to it, which I'm all for. Um, there is uh, kids that get into mischief and trouble, which I'm all for. You know, and there is a, all the important elements of a kick-ass movie. Yeah, dark mysticism oh, yeah. and uh, even some really uh, questionable stop motion animation that uh, mm-hmm. which makes it just awesome for me cuz it's a little a little questionable dated. Yeah, i like it <laughs> maybe slightly uh slightly questionable uh, Good. claymation going on there but <laughs> that's the best kind absolutely the gate it, for me is it and then you know like i started to think about all the other ones and i had a hard time not picking pet cemetery or christine because those are oh those, yeah christine i didn't even think of christine yeah, those, good call those two are so close to my heart but the yeah. one i went with just because of what the impact was on me when i first watched it was poltergeist i know it's a popular pick i know that it's uh, it's a very well known uh movie <clears throat> and we tend to to stray away from a lot of that here but that movie for me exemplifies what is scary about supernatural horror. You know, the, these days in the modern era, there's tons of supernatural horror movies that come out. But for me, that one is scary just because it is what it is. And um, that scared the bejesus out of me when I was a kid. So for me, The Gate and Poltergeist are my two, I think. Nice. I can see that. Neither one of those are mine. Um, so I kind of went a different direction. Uh, the first pick I got is Suspiria, which is a movie, again, that has inspired me creatively. Um, Dario Argento and the the music of Goblin and just the spectacle that is that film is awesome to me. And I don't even care. It could be about anything, quite honestly. But it is about witches and that sort of supernatural element. So um, it's the first one that came to mind for me. And it's more so not the story as much as the substance of the film that I love. Yeah. Um, and the other pick, I just picked the entire evil dead franchise. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with that <laughs> because it's a, it's a franchise of films that, you know, when it comes to that supernatural element and the over the top ridiculousness of just the style of filmmaking that, that is evil dead. Like, Yeah. It, that's a lot of fun for me. I'm not super big on supernatural stuff in general. Like I said, I kind of hadn't even thought about it. It's like I had to sit down and and really think, well, what even is supernatural? Because uh, I don't, I'm not gravitating towards those films necessarily. But yeah, well, <clears throat> I think that when you when you're talking about the different genres here, so slasher, there's no there's nothing supernatural about that. Zombies, it's creative, but I don't think it's supernatural. It doesn't it 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 plays to viruses and things like that that can happen, but supernatural for me is anything that's unexplainable and anything that has a, a sure. an element of um, you know, ghosts or um Weird stuff happening, uh, you know, like Christine, I think, is a really great example. It's an alive car, you know. Right. That's a good pick. I also had a hard time not picking Night of the Demons because that's technically like a – that's also a great um, – for our next category, I also didn't pick it for this, but a holiday movie. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there, there's a lot of them out there. You know, I had to think about it for a minute, though. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um so, yeah, I, I think both of those picks are good. And, you know, that first one you mentioned, I had not seen that one. Suspiria? Suspiria, I have not seen that. Okay, we need to rectify that. We need to rectify that, that for sure. Shame on you. Yeah, let's, rec- <laughs> let's, re- let's rectify that shit. <laughs> we will. I'd love to show you that film. That's another gorgeous. I tried showing you another Dario Argento film that, uh, you know, we'll work on that 
We got to work on the Argento with you because they're gorgeous movies. Yep. I think I've never experienced them uh, the way I need to. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Cool. Cool. All right. So let's talk about holiday movies. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, let's talk about holiday movies. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, there's so many. And, uh, you know, Again, I went back to movies that impacted me as a growing horror lover, and I keep coming back to this. So the things that I love now about different holiday movies, like, for instance, Christmas Evil is one that I love just because of how bad it is that's mm -hmm. it, that it's good, you know. But I'm going back, and I'm thinking about the things that had the most impact on me growing up. And one of them was the – and it's cheesy and common, but it's the first Halloween movie. The very first one. Yeah, I with, think it had an effect on most of us if yeah. we're horror fans, to be honest. Yeah, it did. And, you know, <clears throat> it, it's something that – more so than the Friday the 13th thing is that this can literally happen in any town in the world. You know, it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be anything crazy or supernatural. A kid doesn't have to die under the lake and his mom goes insane. It just, this guy can be nuts anywhere. And well, keep... and that's to say though, Michael Myers kind of has morphed over time into more of a supernatural being, especially in the most recent Halloween films. Yeah. But yeah, the original, he's just a fucking psycho man. And that's what, that's what scared me because it didn't have, you know, it wasn't a, a demon or something like that. It was just a guy. Yeah. And... Oh, I was a lot more afraid of guys with knives um, in my single digit years. Yeah. For some reason, you know, getting stabbed was a concern I had. That's definitely a concern <laughs> when you, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was one of them. <clears throat> and then honestly, the other one that I think subverted Christmas for me when I was a kid is Gremlins. Oh, for sure. So, okay. So, you know, you watch Christmas movies and they all have a similar warm, warm, fuzzy feeling about them. And when you watch Gremlins, guess what? You have that warm, fuzzy feeling. It feels like a Christmas movie. Until it doesn't. Yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> that's what subverted Christmas for me. So I, you know, that movie right there, I think scared me as a, as just a little tiny kid, um, to the point where, you know, I, I became obsessed with the Mogwai and with Gremlins and I had all this stuff and it just, mm -hmm. you know, I loved being scared. That's the first movie that taught me how to love being scared watching a movie. Awesome. That's a good pick. I, I hadn't even thought of Gremlins for that. I was thinking of it for something else. But um, so my holiday films that and it's really just based off of what I like to watch for horror. I didn't really dig deep into my childhood, but um, Halloween three season of the witch, the one that everybody likes to skip over who likes the Michael Myers Halloween films. Um, and I, for years, skipped over it myself as a younger person until I realized um that I was doing myself a disservice, a huge disservice by skipping what is arguably the best Halloween film in, mm. in the entire series. Um, I'll catch a lot of shit for that. So I'm not, don't quote me there, but uh, Halloween three season of the witch it has none of the Michael Myers storyline at all. It's its own independent storyline. And originally that was supposed to be, the idea with the Halloween films, it was more going to be like an anthology type of thing. Um, but it ended up sticking with the Michael Myers storyline. But anyways, Halloween three takes place at Halloween and I won't give too many details, but you got Tom Atkins, you got some killer Halloween costume masks and some amazing kills. Like it's a good fucking time and it's eighties as hell. And also, did I mention Tom Atkins? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think you might have okay. mentioned Tom Atkins. He's the shit. He would not sign my tits. You know that? I asked him if he would at a convention. He would not. <laughs> he was like, no, I cannot. I'm like, all right, Tom Atkins, got some respect for yourself. All right. <laughs> so I have four or five Halloween movies on tape on VHS. The one I don't have is number three. I know. And What a problem that I'm is. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this right now. I don't think I've ever seen it. Frankly. I believe you. And again, we need to rectify this. Yeah. It's a huge problem because you're going to love that movie. I've seen one and two because they, you know, those are one right after the other. And then I've seen the more recent ones. I've seen H2O. I've seen a couple other ones, but I've never seen number three. got to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a problem here that we're going to have to rectify. It's, it's a cult classic among horror fans. It doesn't have the reach beyond that, but there's a lot of us that definitely appreciate that movie. And um, you know, arguably think it's maybe the best one, or it's just fun to say that because it pisses people off. Yeah, <laughs> I hear that. What was your other holiday movie? My other holiday pick is Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, because it's 
like it's so stupid and so bad it's good and also if you watch part two you don't have to watch part one because they spend the first like 40 minutes of the movie just recapping the first (laughs) film (laughs) like he's retelling it the brother's like retelling it it's ridiculous so but you get all of that plus you get all the ridiculousness of part two so um it's just a good time for me it's uh so bad it's good, yeah. basically. I can definitely appreciate that. I have seen Silent Night, Deadly Night. I had, I don't think I've seen number two, but oh I have. God. S- it's such a trip. We got to go on it. Okay. I'm with you. Well, um, that was fun. The, you, you brought up a lot of movies that I want to watch, and I think that we picked one out for you that we need to watch, too. The Gate, I think, is one that we should probably have a discussion about. Uh, yeah, that's one movie from your list that I really need to see. There's a, like a ton of movies on my list you need to see. Yeah, well, I mean, that just goes to show that your breadth of knowledge in the horror genre it probably uh, supersedes mine in some way. Well, not that it's a competition. No, it's cool. You're better than me. It's fine. That's your superiority. I'll take the W. Take the dub. Take the dub. Walk walk away. But I'm just saying, like, that's why we're doing this, right? Because, you know, we get to share this with each other. And, you know, I might introduce you to something that you're going to find amazing. And it might be your new favorite thing in the whole world. That's, well, I guarantee you that that is probably going to happen at some point here you probably will introduce me to something that'll just blow my mind and i'll be super excited about it and it'll next time we do one of these favorite and genres i may have a new list based on some stuff you've shown me so i look forward to that me too well uh we're gonna sign out uh it has been fun uh i am owen i'm katie and this has been the vhs vault podcast we've got wooden stakes for all the vampires you can melt those zombies with salt We've got silver bullets for the wolves We've got it all down in the vault